the new adventure twins from the Bajaj Pulsar family, the AS150 and 200. Our CNB Viewer's Choice Car of the Year contest winner gets a hold of her new i20. And it's a powerful new monster from Audi. We have dibs on the RS7. It's car and bike time here on the NDTV network. Thank you for joining us. I'm Siddharth Kanayak Patankar. Quite a lot packed into the episode as always and we will keep bringing you the very latest from the world of wheels. That's our promise. We're going to start off by of course talking about those bikes from Bajaj but uh, you can see that I have with me the new E-Cabrio, the topless version of the E-Class. When I say new, it is the facelifted version. We'll tell you a little bit more about the car as we go along. It's just driven into the market, remember, a few weeks ago along with the CLS. Now let's talk about those Bajaj bikes. There seems to be a new strategy afoot from Bajaj because it's trying to now take the Pulsar brand from being a vertical stretch as in the past to now a horizontal one. So it's not so much about just the displacement but the attribute of the bike that Bajaj is going after. It's the Adventure series or the AS150 and 200 from the Pulsar family. Ronak and Bala had the chance to ride them just outside of Pune. Adventure bikes are motorcycles with great on-road and good off-road capabilities like the Triumph Tigers, KTM Adventure and the BMW GS series. And so in the true sense, these new bikes from Bajaj under the Pulsar brand can't be really termed adventure bikes, but then maybe they are more affordable touring motorcycles. Now the Bajaj Pulsar family is growing in size and it's now got into the affordable adventure bike as they call it uh, and I have the top of the line AS200 with me right now largely based on the already existing Pulsar 200 NS so I pretty much know what to expect in terms of performance from the bike so it'll be interesting to see what kind of touring characteristics it brings to the table in terms of ride and handling. So Ronak joins us for another Pulsar AS in this segment this is the AS150 but a slightly more different story on this one uh, it's got a little bit more changes than what you saw on the AS200, isn't it Rana? Uh, yes, but uh, it will be interesting to put the new 150cc engine on this bike on test and also it's got the new framing parameter. So it will be interesting to see how the entire ride quality has changed. So it's a hot, hot day here in Lavasa, so it's going to be interesting how we're going to be ride riding around the winding roads here. So let's get started. Yes, let's go. The design on the Pulsar AS bikes does offer some bits of an adventure feel with the quarter fairing blending well with the sculpted tank and the split seats. Things that will catch your eye at first glance are the projector headlamps, tall windscreen and the 10 spoke 17 inch alloys that give it a touring character. The rest of the bike is familiar and styling is largely borrowed from the 200 NS. But unlike the RS200 which looked a tad overstyled, the AS seems more precise. We like the backlit switch gear and the semi-digital instrument cluster that's easy enough to read with two trip meters, an odometer and a clock. So while the bikes share the same design, the AS150 gets a freshly tuned engine which is air-cooled and feels refined and delivers linear acceleration. While Bajaj claims it's all new, it really means that the existing Pulsar 150cc engine is now smoother with improved refinement. The 150cc engine doesn't feel too strained around winding roads with a fairly smooth 5-speed gearbox. Mid-range torque is plenty and ideal for regular commuting speeds, although at higher revs some vibrations do creep in. The 200 meanwhile packs quite a punch 
and sounds a bit angry as it does. Quick off the block, the bike feels eager to be pushed around. The clutch feel too is quick, but the gearbox doesn't feel quite as precise as it should. Especially in stop-go city traffic where you usually want to downshift to the right gear. The telescopic front suspension and the rear monoshocks do their job well to absorb rough roads and the tyres offer good grip. The suspension has been tuned for a softer setup on the AS150 for city road conditions. On the AS200 though the ride is stiffer and therefore quite sporty. Given these bikes don't have the tall stands of a regular adventure bike, the AS does offer a comfortable and easy riding position. Both bikes offer good ground clearance and a generous wheelbase when compared to its rivals in its segments. Now the ride quality on both the bikes are fairly impressive with the new perimeter frame working really well keeping the body balanced, dipping in and out of corners with very good ease. Uh, but the brakes do work fairly well but you do wish that ABS was offered as an option at least on the AS200. But hang in there, Bajaj is hinting that a more powerful adventure bike is on its way with the works of a proper adventure kind of kit on it with a bigger fuel tank, some more added features that will really define the adventure biking segment for Bajaj. That really is good news, especially as Bajaj has got off to a good start with these affordable adventure bikes. The Bajaj Pulsar AS150 and AS200 are priced at 79,000 rupees and 92,500 rupees respectively. These prices are egg showroom Delhi and should attract buyers who cannot necessarily afford a fully loaded true blue adventure bike. But don't forget what we told you that a full-on adventure bike is also on its way from Bajaj in the not so distant future. The Bajaj Pulsar AS, both the 150 and 200, please react to those bikes. Tell us how you like this new strategy from Bajaj and uh, whether the adventure series are adventurous enough for you. Now, when it comes to the facelift on this car, uh, the whole idea was to, of course, bring that new E-Class face onto the cabrio as well. And it actually serves the car really well because it is a sportier, more aggressive sort of styling up front. And what you see is that uh, even the way the new daytime running LEDs integrate with that front grille, it gives the car a classical yet swept back look, which really works for a convertible. So uh, on the whole, I think it's uh, perhaps a better looking car now for more obvious reasons than its predecessor before the facelift. Now let's go ahead and talk about that Audi RS7. It is of course a sizzling car from Audi. It is its range topper as well. If you don't count the LMX, which is a very small niche variant of the R8, well then the RS7 is the most powerful Audi as well. We've had the chance to check it out. It has just driven into the Indian market. Here's the review. It is one of the very few cars that plays the dual role many sports sedans and coupes wish to play most effectively. It can be your stately saloon, your racy four-door coupe, and also a thoroughbred sports fiend. The Audi RS7 first arrived in 2013 as the pumped up version of the A7 Sportback. Audi has chosen to already give it a facelift just a year over its arrival globally, primarily to be able to introduce some new technologies into the car. Most changes are purely cosmetic though, thankfully. I say that because the RS7 has already been established as a great performance benchmark in this space and so there are no mechanical changes on the tweaked car. What has changed is its face with a slightly more pronounced and aggressive grille, a tweaked bumper, sharper slimmer headlamps with a new LED daytime running lamp signature and Audi's much touted Matrix LED light system. Inside you now get slightly better contoured and well bolstered sports seats, 
the latest generation of Audi's MMI or multimedia interface with navigation. And some carbon fiber finished trim highlights. Audi India has changed the suspension option on the car, but I will just come to that in a bit. Now that daytime running signature is really quite nice, but it's all very well about all the styling changes. The real question any of us should be asking, does it still drive like it used to? That is what I'm about to find out. First, a quick reminder of this wolf in sheep's clothing. The car is powered by the now familiar and extremely potent twin-turbo V8 that bridles in 560 horses. Yes, I will let that figure settle in as it rings many a bells. The engine is mated to a very capable 8-speed ZF gearbox with paddle shifters. The transmission is pure delight, more so in manual or sports mode. It is precise, engaging, ridiculous fun on the downshift and extremely responsive. The RS7 does exactly what you want it to. It is the type of car that gets you smiling and for the most part keeps that smile firmly pasted on your face. Good roads are of course a vital ingredient to that wonderful experience. I drove the car up winding twisty and hilly bits with very less traffic as well as on the expressway and I'm happy to report it remains a driver's delight. Audi has now put in three top speed versions that buyers can opt for, 250, 280 and 305 km per hour. This is down to retuning the engine but the buyer has to ask for one of the three at the time of purchase. Peak torque at a massive 700 Nm kicks in as low as 1750 RPM and it really comes in handy, especially when you want to quickly accelerate up a hard stretch or overtake someone in a flash. The car still takes to corners just beautifully. It's very precise. The steering is really nice and precise too. And uh, I have to say that uh, the engine still goes like a rocket. And so overall, you can't help but kind of keep smiling when you're driving a car like this, especially if you have a nice winding twisty section like I do right now. And the good news, it also still sounds pretty good doing it. Meanwhile, Audi India has rather inexplicably decided not to offer the car with the adaptive air suspension anymore and it has instead gone with the new option, the sports suspension with dynamic ride control as standard for India. While that sounds fancy and superior, it kind of lets you down in Indian conditions. You see, the suspension is now fixed at a rather stiff tuning parameter, unlike the adaptive suspension the car first came with last year. What this means is sportier, more dynamic handling, but a rather hard ride quality, which Indian buyers may not appreciate. The air suspension used to suit this car just fine, and you can still get that on the global model. Of course, despite this, you can play around with the car's dynamics using Audi's Drive Select that allows you to change the car's character somewhat. The new RS7 is priced at 1 crore 40 lakh rupees. It is the car to spend these big bucks on if you don't simply want a souped up sedan like the S6 or even the E63 AMG, nor want an out and out sports car like the Porsche Cayman. The new face is bold and striking. And yes, I know that this car will end up being sadly really restricted in India to just a few units. The facelifted Audi RS7 looking even hotter than before. Now, we have been talking about another facelift right through the show. It is the E-Cabrio. The rear doesn't look significantly different from the last car. And uh, if anything, it's just a little change in the taillight treatment. But, you know, there's this bulge in the car over here a little bit in the rear fender, which, uh, of course, has been carried over from the last car. But 
I have to say it's more congruous with this car. Again, that whole sporty appeal of the face. But I think this bulge kind of complements that. It gives the car a sense of power and agility. And why not? Because it is a slightly more powerful engine as well. We'll talk about all of that. And of course, there's plenty more to look forward to on the program as well after a very short break. Welcome back to CNB. Inside, the e-cabrio is the lap of luxury. Great finish, nice materials, sport seats, a pleasant trim, and a little classic touch with the analog clock here in the dash. You do now have the updated command system with MB apps, which includes the NDTV app, I might add. And uh, you've, of course, already seen what's under the hood. It is a nice 60 horsepower jump as far as the power output goes. So uh, does all of this justify the massive jump in price? Well, you be the judge of that because the car has become a lot pricier now at well over 70 lakh rupees. It's gone up to 78 lakh rupees, in fact. And compare that to 64.5 lakhs previously and yeah, it does start to seem a lot pricier. So you get a more efficient engine, you get better interiors and a little updated system. Also some driver assistance aids that have been added in now, but still, a massive jump in price. Okay, let's move on now and go down to Hyderabad where we have our winner of the CNB Viewers' Choice Car of the Year contest. Payal Vora voted for the i20 and she won it. The uh, CNB Viewers' Choice Car of the Year. It's Hyundai i20. We were very proud to have the Hyundai i20 coming up, trumps in the CNB Viewers' Choice category as Car of the Year. And the winner of the car itself was Payal Vora from Hyderabad. Payal is a homemaker ever since she had her two kids so she could focus on their upbringing. Payal began watching the car and bike show around five years ago and since then she has taken part in all the CNB Viewers Choice contests. So the win has been hard on and guess what, the i20 pile has won will be the Vora's first ever car. This is the happiest day of my life. This is my first car and that was Hyundai i20. And it's all thanks to NDTV and car and bike show. Thank you so much. I believe dreams do come true and this is my dream which has come true. After the initial paperwork and a small briefing on the car, it was a time for Pyle to finally get her hands on her new ride, looking resplendent in red. And the Hyundai dealer staff had arranged for a small surprise for the Voras. 
NDTV the most they have given us the opportunity to win this uh, play this contest and we have win it and that's it nothing else I can express more than this all of us at CNB wish Payal and her family many many miles of safe and happy journeys in their brand new i20 Payal Bora and her family very happy with their new i20 remember you win big with CNB now I will say goodbye but uh, always remember that there's lots of automobile programming coming up right through the week 8:30 p.m. every weeknight on NDTV Prime so tune into that and as always I remind you please wear your seat belts please wear your helmets